to the next topic, which is innovative solutions for foundations and deep basement, which is presented by Dr. Nopadon Pianwen. Let me give a brief introduction to our speaker today. Dr. Nopadon Pianwen, he graduated his bachelor degree from Chulalongkorn University, Thailand, and then he continued his postgraduate study at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, USA. Uh, focusing on geotechnical engineering. He is holding associate professor position in geotechnical and earth resources engineering and geosystem exploration and petroleum geoengineering field of study, School of Engineering and Technology, AIT. His expertise includes tunneling and underground excavation impacts of urban tunneling, slope stability, and landslide, lands, land subsidence, geotechnics in hydropower project development. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Nopadon Pianwe, our speaker today. Thank you, uh, Dr. Panjit, Mr. Chairman. Uh, please allow me to have this uh, notebook set up because Dr. Benning used his, so <laughs> we have to change uh, to the common notebook here. Uh, while we are waiting that, okay, you have listened to Dr. Benning who giving you the uh, information on the potential hazards that we may be facing, and that is one area. I think his, his, uh, that is his area of the profession and everybody have to be uh, aware of potential the effect of the natural disaster and what we would like to try to do our best uh, to live in this world that keep on changing. Earthquake, we, you know that we have limitation in forecasting and so on. But anyway, let's bring back to my topic here. Uh, I will be talking to you on a different uh, aspect which is on construction. Now we try to make construction particularly for urban area that would dealing with uh, building so many buildings as well as excavation underground and try to make it safe and most econ uh, economics way and uh, that is actually our duty uh, to provide to the society. Uh, before I do that, let me introduce our uh, Few at uh, AIT, which is a geotechnical uh, and earth resources engineering. Yes, over the years, it keeps on changing. This field has been established quite some time back, 1967, and during the time, it uh, played a very important role in research and education in geotechnical engineering in Southeast Asian region. During the time, I think AIT was the, the leading uh, institute in, in the region, but now today, time changed. Some uh, country has built up their own capability in geotechnical engineering quite well. But AT still continue to do as uh, best as we could to uh, offer some sort of service, education, and so on in this area. Over the year, we have a lot of uh, alumni in the regions. And the field uh, of geotechnical engineering uh, and earth resource that we have now today uh, still concentrate on soil engineering because in Bangkok or in major urban areas in, in, in Southeast Asia, I think the city are founded on soy. So soil engineering is very important, but now today also uh, a lot of development in mountainous areas for infrastructures particularly. So uh, engineering geology and rock engineering are very, uh, very important. And we also have another uh, area which is the uh, the uh, geosystem and geo-exploration, petroleum engineering. This is for exploration of oil and gas, which is now in higher, high demand in the regions. In soil engineering, you can see this uh, general uh, description of what we have been doing, pipe foundation, excavation, and embankment roadway. And this is what you need when you want to build uh, both uh, infrastructures and uh, buildings in the city and elsewhere. In, uh, in the mountainous area, uh, the engineering geology and rock engineering is very important, particularly now today. There is a trend for infrastructure development. Uh, 
Yesterday, I just came back from Vietnam, visit one uh, construction site of hydropower, uh, the build in the mountainous area. Whenever you touch the uh, vulnerable mountainous area, geology is very complicated, there's a lot of problems. And this is something that we try to educate uh, the, the youngster and uh, uh, engineer to be aware of what you should do your best in order to make the project successful when you uh, need to do excavation or you do hydropower projects in the region. Vietnam now today just realized uh, from this visit they build so many hydropower projects from north to south. It's not big, but they're actively doing that. In Laos also, major project in Myanmar would come, but in Thailand now we cannot do it because uh, uh, we are really weak to explain to the uh, community, uh, to the society about the the need to do the infrastructure development uh, as compared to preserve environment. Uh, in terms of the exploration for oil and gas, so we've been doing that and every year we produce about uh, 20 or uh, 20, 10 to 20 graduates, both from in Thailand and in Vietnam to serve an oil and gas industry. Anyway, anyway come back to the uh, content of my presentation, Dr. Naveed asked me to talk about foundation of tall buildings, excavation of tall buildings, but actually foundation and excavation is not necessarily for tall buildings in any infrastructure projects. You would need to do that. And this is a, a brief content of my talk. The first part, uh, we talk about deep excavation, foundation, and some new idea on improvement of or improving the design of the foundation in order to make the uh, construction uh, uh, feasible. For example, Dr. Deming just mentioned the really high rise building in Bangkok that demand really high capacity foundation. Sometimes the soil cannot yield such a high capacity. How can we do that in order to make the construction uh, uh, possible and it doesn't cost too much. So in city and uh, area like this, urban development is, really, uh, is ongoing. And this is Bangkok, some time back now, so there you look at Bangkok, it doesn't look like this anymore. There's more building come up. Uh, Hanoi, uh, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, just one year back, you go back and you see big difference. Uh, the, uh, uh, during the few years back, uh, Vietnam has developed a lot of real estate and building uh, construction uh, in, uh, in the country. But now so they're due to the economic crisis, it stopped from the private or real estate, but it's still going on on the infrastructure. They are building uh, now uh, first uh, subway projects and, uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, and the second one will come up. When we talk about the use of the, in the urban development, is this a necessary at the end to make use of underground space as well as build building? and you will have something like that. Underground space would be uh, utilized, so in that case, you would need some sort of construction, construction next to the building, and you sometimes you want to do building next to the underground structure, so you cannot get away with the proper design of a pile foundation, a foundation for big building and also excavation. So deep excavation and foundation is very really important for geotechnical engineering. And this is a photo showing to you uh, construction, this one is in Bangkok, on this one here, you can see here excavation is relatively open, but you come down here with the internal support, when you have to go deeper here, there's a lot of uh, you know, lateral support put in, and pile foundation, there's various type of pile foundation that has been used in Bangkok, different piles, but when you go to large capacity power, you have to use, go deep and deep, so driven power is not possible, so you have to use uh, ball piles. And in this, this photo is just the photos in Singapore Marina Bay area that they still do a lot of development high rise building and you may see here that uh, in this here there's pile foundation, a new building will come up. So the work on pile foundation and deep excavation is over there. So I will use Bangkok as a case example. Bangkok would be, uh, it's good to, for, to use as an example for geotechnical engineering education or learning because Bangkok uh, founded on uh, very weak uh, subsoil condition, soft soil that Dr. Binding had mentioned. And below you have a, a series of layer of soil continue for really great depth. So in such case, the uh, uh, geotechnical engineering or foundation work is not that simple, so you have to face with uh, a soft soil condition, large sediment, and also in Bangkok, 
since we in the past we have done a lot of the groundwater pumping uh, for use, so subsidence is also there. And Bangkok also low lying. There's a potential of flooding when you do the underground structure, underground space. You have to pay attention to that. And also now today, so since uh, we have big flood problem in 2011, so there is a uh, there is now a scheme to come up with a big flood channel or flood way. Uh, uh, through the side of the city, and that will require deep excavation, either in terms of deep canal or uh, tunnel that have to be constructed in uh, the soft subsoil condition. So that have to be well planned in order to make sure that the excavation is safe and it doesn't uh, cost so much money. And this is a situation that you may see because of the soft ground and condition as well as land subsidence from this well pumping. We are facing with not only capacity of the foundation to resist the load of the building, but also settlement. Settlement is a big headache. And how can we prevent this or whether you, we can cope with such a level of Settlement cracks, how much we can tolerate. You cannot design a structure saying that no settlement and no cracks at all in such a geologic setting. And this is a case of uh, foundation design that when you want to do some sort of development of design structure, you have to uh, consider various alternatives. One way to make sure that, uh, to, to, to ensure that the building would not settle, you put the uh, building on power, long power, resting on hard layer, but you would have, uh, you would have settlement between building, big settlement between building and the surrounding ground like this. This is a ball power that left in place in Mexico City for a few years. Already you see big uh, protruding of the power above uh, on the surface. I think the best way is to make the building settle along with the ground. You don't have to uh, face problem with building cracks at the connection joint here, but you, we have to change our design criteria and the uh, acceptance criteria of the user or everybody to uh, allow building to settle under the uh, 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 safe manner. Uh, for soft subground, sub you cannot rely upon shallow foundation because it would settle. And in Bangkok, what we've been using is uh, a pile something like this, or sometimes it's like this, and we also have settlement problem. When we talk about subsidence, uh, very famous for Bangkok, and AT has been a has a, has a, was a pioneer in doing research in this area, and we've been continuing doing that. It's since 19. Uh, late nine, uh, 1970, we realized subsidence, and Bangkok has settled, was settling then at the rate of about 10 centimeters a year. People panic and try to control it. So we try to reduce the rate of subsidence. By doing so, we have to reduce the amount of ground water pumping. So we success to do that over the, uh, the, uh, the following uh, 20 years after the first notice of subsidence. This is the plot of water level in the uh, uh, sand layer about 50 meter to about 20 meter. During the subsidence uh, period, ground water level in the sand layer or aquifer layer drop down. But when we have the subsidence under control, now the ground water come up. It come up very really fast. During about uh, 10 years period, it come up about 10 meters, rebound back. So people are happy because subsidence now seem to stop, but it's create, create another problem because when ground water come up, it reduces soil strength, it reduces pile capacity, it increases uplift pressure to the underground structure. For the structure that doesn't have high load sitting on top like a tall building, there's a potential of floating up of the structure. So this is a problem that we are facing at the moment and we try to control the rebound ground water level in such a way that it would not create uh, adverse effects to the foundation of building to the underground structure. So that is a thing. Okay, let me come to the deep excavation uh, uh, aspect. Okay, this excavation, uh, when we have to excavate 10 meter, 20 meter down uh, from the ground surface, there are various uh, possibility to make excavation. Like this one, there's a tile wall, sheet pile wall, and in this Singapore they go down to 32 meters. So they use really uh, heavy uh, sheet pile wall section, but this sheet pile wall section, since 
uh, by itself is thin, so it has large ground movement. Another alternative, using diaphragm wall, which is concrete diaphragm wall, is commonly done. And in this particular case, you may see that the lateral support is outside. It's not inside, so the old excavation area is, very, is open, so it's very good for construction uh, uh, time and uh, construction progress. But whether you can do that or not is depending on the soil conditions surrounding. Another type is ball pie walls that can be used. For concrete wall, it can be concrete panel or ball pie walls. Uh, whichever the uh, option you use, depending on many factors, soil condition as well as construction of, uh, equipment available and construction uh, experience uh, that, uh, that uh, you may have at each particular location. And then another, another uh, alternative for deep excavation to retaining soil is by improving subsoil itself. In Bangkok, we have used it in a number of projects. For example, this is an excavation of a really huge complex of one of the leading bank, commercial bank in Bangkok. They use uh, inject cement into the surrounding uh, area for the excavation and make this to form wall. But this kind of uh, treated soil, which is just like a weak concrete, is really weak in tension. So in order to improve that, uh, we AIT have done some sort of the, uh, research to see, instead of making plain concrete mix, uh, uh, cement mixed with soil, put some sort of insertion of timber pile or uh, small size uh, RC power inside and what would be the capacity increase. And this is a plot of the lateral load capacity and the lateral displacement. And you can see here with some sort of improvement, uh, insertion of the, this reinforcement here, the capacity of the soil cement column increased significantly. So this is a trend now that we are uh, uh, in Bangkok uh, uh, trying to adopt. In terms of the support of deep excavation, you can see here, this is a common way to do the excavation and support. Cheap wall put in, and you need to excavate down, so you put in internal support. And you may see here, this is really crowded. To go in and go out, bring equipment down, or take the soil, excavate the soil out, it's really inconvenient, so it's not so good. But if you don't have other choice, you have to go with this. So this is the internal bracing. If you have some choice to put in some sort of anchor behind, outside the excavation area, that would be good, but that depending on the soil condition as well as the uh, legal as, uh, uh, condition of the land, land light behind the uh, excavation or a construction area. But if you can do something like this, this is excellent for deep excavation because it's, there's no obstruction at all. For the deep excavation, another aspect that need to be looked at is the stability. When you go down quite deep, soil pressure will be really high. There is a potential of base failure. Base failure can be the, uh, caused by the failure of the soil stress too high exceeding strength, or you can have water pressure coming up too high that you may have seepage piping, or sometimes you have uh, some sort of clay layer here, which is watertight, and sand layer below, you may have some sort of upheave. And this become a problem in Bangkok now today, that after the groundwater rebound for the uh, subway station excavation in, in the current uh, project that we have now, this is a headache that, never, that in the past uh, we, have, we didn't expect it before. But anyway, we have to try to take care of that. And there are various methods to, to do that. One is to improve the soil below the base of the excavation. Another method is to, in this case, is to put in the so-called cross beam, which is the concrete strut at the bottom of excavation. Another method for groundwater dewatering. And this is not, uh, this is a concept, well, the, uh, the solution uh, that can, can be used, but how to implement it is not straightforward and it's quite difficult because when you, we deal with soil, soil is something that is, is really difficult to, uh, to know exactly what is the property, what is the condition, what is groundwater condition. So we have to play by ears mostly. Observation during construction is really important. Okay, for selection of wall for deep excavation, is depending on the depth, size of the area to be excavated, subsoil condition, groundwater is very important. Uh, condition of the surrounding area, particularly if you do construction in urban area. The damage to the third party, potential damage to the third party is very important if, because if you make excavation and uh, nearby building move and cracks, 
uh, the construction may be stopped by the owner of the building, you know, take the case to the court, and then the court will order uh, uh, suspension of construction, and that affects the construction a lot. And it depends on the cost and time of construction. And then, for example, like in this photo, you see here in the same excavation, but they use different type of wall. On this side, a cheap uh, timber and steel pile wall, and this one is concrete wall. There's a reason for that, because on this side, there is a railway that you need to, put, uh, they need to protect. Okay, in deep excavation, we concerned about stability of the soil, uh, the wall structures, the wall strength, as well as ground movement. At the moment, with the advance of the numerical computation, it is indispensable not uh, to, uh, for the design uh, to use a numerical analysis. Because when you do the numerical analysis, you would know the soil, consider soil interaction and everything. And in that case, not only the stress in the soil, stress in the wall, stress in the supporting system, but also the ground movement and the potential damage, whatever the underground structures that you may have or surface structure that you may have, it we can consider and we can know uh, roughly what would be the potential movement, potential damage of those structures that we may have. And that would be the trend now today for the research as well as for the practice that we need to use numerical analysis. And at AT, we've been doing that. And to do that, we have to have a model to simulate the soil property and soil behavior uh, uh, well, uh, well enough. Okay. And in the deep excavation, in case that you don't need to put in the internal support at all, that would be excellent. And that is normally is for the case of ring structure, circular structure, even though it's not circular like this one, uh, it's just rectangular. But as long as the hoop stress can be built up, the excavation can be constructed excavated without any internal support. So small excavation normally is not a problem. How about big excavation? Big excavation, that can be done as well, but sometimes you have to provide ring beam, something like this. And this excavation is not small, in the order of a uh, few uh, tens of meters. But recently, beside the circular structure itself, there is a trend for research to go in and make a circular sort of uh, the curve shape of the structure in order to make use of hoop stress, orange stress, something like that. So in such a way, we don't need to uh, use internal support. And that saves money as well as save construction time. And this is some excavation that actually has been done already in Singapore. And you may see here, this is not uh, circular. And the excavation like this one, uh, not that circular, but it's work with the ring support. And this one excavation is more than 100 meter has been excavated using this shape. And the lateral support inside is almost none. And also this shape here, excavation in Singapore, uh, at my uh, uh, colleague at the uh, National University of Singapore uh, uh, look into that. We uh, 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 cooperate in terms of this, develop this numerical uh, uh, program together, and they make use of the non-internal support uh, approach. And this is the excavation area. And you may see here that uh, by adopting the so-called wall with some sort of buttress here. Excavation here can be done without internal support at all, and that saves a lot of money. But in order to do that, it have the uh, behavior of the, uh, the wall at the soil have to be checked carefully. And that can only be done by making use of the uh, sophisticated or advanced some sort of numerical analysis, 3D finite element analysis, consider the soil property and soil structure interaction really carefully like this one. And the crowd settlement, bending moment in the wall can be determined, and you can vary the soil property a little and see uh, what is the uh, potential uh, movement and stress that it may occur. Okay, yeah, it's only 20 minutes. Start at 10. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Changing notebook and so on. Uh, yeah, I look at that. Okay, let me continue. I, I think I can't continue it this time. Okay. Uh, also, for the deep excavation, in terms of method of excavation, we can excavate. There's two types. Uh, one is excavate down to the bottom and start casting the permanent structure. We call this uh, bottom-up construction, which means that for high-rise building, you have to finish the excavation and casting the uh, permanent structure up to the ground floor first before you can do the superstructure uh, construction. This takes 
longer time as compared to another technique, which you come down and come down to the first level and then use the permanent part of the permanent slab, permanent slab as the internal support itself. And in doing so, it will save time because once you come down to the first level here, you can already start construction on the upper uh, above ground already. That would save time for high-rise building construction. But for this technique, there are some, some constraints. For this technique to, uh, to work, you need to preform column to support the slab, part of the slab that you will cast and use as the lateral support. We call this preform column. They were using I beam inserted in the ball pipe down below here. So there are some constraints here. Sometimes, if the technology and construction method is not good enough, there will be deviation and uh, of the uh, preform column as well as ball pile here. That may affect the final column position of the building. So this is something that can be looked at and try to improve in order for uh, for us to utilize this technique go deeper and deeper for deep excavation. But at the end, if that can be done, the top-down method, even though it may be some sort of slightly uh, uh, cheap, uh, more expensive, but from, time of con uh, from point of view of time construction, it will save a lot of that. Deep excavation is very important for infrastructure uh, uh, development in urban area. For example, in this case, it's a subway project in Bangkok that we are doing now, extension of blue line, the three deep excavations, uh, four deep excavation station, and also we have coming up here in Bangkok, Orange Line and Blue Line that will be underground. And there are some constraints on the surface area that sometimes you cannot open up the whole area from the road surface. In this particular case, excavation, I think the authority required that the excavation only need, uh, can be made on the side of the road and come down like this and enlarge the station. This is something new and need to be looked at carefully. One idea is to make use of the mining solution to come up with the station excavation, use co conventional excavation, but that would require some sort of ground treatment. But anyway, analysis can be done uh, to check with the ground treatment, excavation is safe, but from the real uh, uh, implementation, one have to judge how perfect is the ground treatment, how well we know the soil property really well, even though we have this uh, numerical analysis, whether we can trust on the result of numerical analysis. And at the end, when the contractor got the project, they didn't follow that one, they adopt another method, which means that they will come down here and put in that wall here, and, di uh, and another diaphragm wall here, and then they make a roof by pipe roof technique here. That is an innovative type of construction. Side by side, a small tunnel being put here, and it forms the preformed roof of the excavation. In that case, they can come down and excavate underneath with a uh, little uh, list of collapse. So risk management, risk assessment is very important for the underground construction. We also will have the uh, subway for the missing link project here. Okay, uh, Dr. Banjas, watch me. So I just want to make it short here. Uh, let me, five minutes, okay? Uh, in terms of the, our the research and the development and ball pie foundation in Bangkok, we have gone quite a long, a far distance, and we know quite well. But now we are at the stage in Bangkok now. High-rise building will be constructed, and for high-rise building constructed in very narrow areas, very small area, pie capacity is not enough. It doesn't matter if you use the largest pie diameter, pie size that we can use, even sometimes they use a rectangular piles. There's no area to put piles in. What can be done in order to improve capacity of the piles? There's two ways to do that. One is to crowd, oops, sorry, so what's the problem? To crowd on the side of the piles, or at the bottom of the piles by cement grout in, in order to improve strength of the soil. In such a way, the skin friction at the end, uh, end bearing resistance can be improved. That is a trend now today in Bangkok as well as in Vietnam. In Vietnam, they always do sharp grouting, and they say that the improvement in terms of the pie capacity is quite significant. But for Bangkok, the situation is that even we do something like that, for high-rise building, the capacity of the power is not enough. So what is the solution then? The solution, and one of the solutions is that if we have 
a foundation that is deep enough, instead of design how to take the structure load 100%, let's make the soil share part of the road. That is pi rough design concept. And with that, if the foundation going to steep clay level, from the analysis that we have done at AT and so on, the soil underneath the raft can take load by in the order of 20%. That is a significant saving. But in order for the design to be done that way, okay, there must be a careful analysis. For example, in this case, this is the building in Dubai. The call is this is a dancing tower, three towers, and the design with concept, same concept, that power would take part of the load and so underneath would take another part of the road. And to do that, exactly, which power would take how much load and what is the stress in the foundation and so on, and whether the sediment of the foundation of the raft here is acceptable or not, we need this uh, 3D uh, analysis, 3D finite element analysis. Okay? A case of Bangkok that we have done and a doctoral student uh, that we've been doing a series of research and finally the doctoral student had finished here. So look at one case of Bangkok. This is uh, a high-rise building on the Chapaya River and the column of the building is like this. Since the area is very small, so the raft that they design have to extend beyond the edge of the building and in order to put in a number of piles. And we did some sort of the finite element analysis showing here that if instead of using conventional way of doing analysis, beam or plate on spring type analysis that most of the structure engineer like to do uh, and most of the, uh, the uh, design companies doing at the moment, we utilize a full-fledged continuum finite element analysis using Pyraf concept. And what we come up is that, okay, let me show you at the end here, the result. Okay, rough sediment. In terms of the load capacity, this is the so-called rigorous 3D finite element analysis that treats soy as soy, not soy as spring, and, and pi as spring only. We see that this is the load on each pile. Barrett is uh, yellow. The load calculated by Barrett or, or on Barrett is much smaller than the conventional design that the structure engineers now is doing, much, much more. What it say here is that the original, uh, the current design practice that uh, people are doing now is too conservative, much too conservative, because they don't take into consideration correctly uh, uh, the uh, soil and structure interaction. And, but by using this concept, we uh, come up with the uh, sediment of the building that is larger than normal calculation. But the sediment for the case of this in Bangkok is only in the order of 40 millimeter, which is quite the same as what actually occurred. Even though the, uh, the some sort of plate on string beam on spring give really small sediment. That is simplified analysis, not realistic and too conservative. So this is what the message that uh, we at AT try to convey to the uh, design uh, uh, company or the design engineer for high-rise building that this uh, pyraph concept with a proper analysis of soil structure interaction that need to use uh, some sort of advanced numerical uh, uh, computation here is essential and if you do so you can save a lot of money and we also run some sort of analysis using reduced number of power, half of the power that they put in. Everything in terms of sediment and the load capacity of the power is acceptable. And in terms of cost saving, if one use the some sort of adjust design, reduce the number of power, re, re, reduce the number of rough thickness, the cost in terms of reduction in the cost of the foundation is 35 million baht and that is 3.8% of the building cost. That is worthwhile to invest, actually. And now uh, this is the, to be the tallest building in Bangkok, very sophisticated, constructed in very small area. In this area, like I told you, there is no, not enough area to put in uh, enough number of piles in, 
if one were to follow the conventional design approach. So in this case, they use the pi raft foundation uh, analysis uh, approach to check that, and eventually it is very made it. Okay, so at, at, at the moment, the construction come up already about that level. Okay, so that would be the end of my uh, 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 the presentation or talk today. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Napadon. Uh, is there any questions from the floor? We could have maybe just one question, quick question. All right. Okay, everybody's hungry. Mm. So, <laughs> okay, I have announcements to you, okay. The first one, the presentation made over here today will be posted on the website AAT.